most racist and anti-Megan Markle trolling comes from just 20 accounts. New study reveals hope not hate have revealed new data on the scope of Meghan Markle trolling days after Kensington Palace released new social media guidelines in the hopes of curbing rampant sexist and racist bullying aimed at the Duchesses of Cambridge and Sussex. Campaign group Hope Not Hate have released new statistics that have shocked the world. Centered on the abuse that pregnant Duchess, Meghan Markle, receives online, the study has narrowed down most of the racist and sexist commentary to just 20 online accounts. It's no secret that the proud biracial mother-to-be faces everything from coded press coverage to flagrantly racist insults daily. Even in Luke's own Instagram comments sections, we have seen the sorts of hateful words reserved solely for the former Suits actress. Now, a campaign group, who have in the past helped to push back against the spurious narratives of right-wing groups like the BNP and AIL, has trawled through 5,200 abusive messages aimed at the 37-year-old in the last two months and made a staggering discovery. Of these thousands of messages, 3,600 tweets were sent from just 20 accounts, meaning 70% of the trolling in January and February was created by these few people, whose entire online presence has been dedicated to bullying of the philanthropist. According to the Daily Mail, these messages ranged from thinly veiled negative comments to out and out racist abuse. Some accounts are pushing the conspiracy theory that Markle has been donning a fake bump and that she and Prince Harry have in fact opted for surrogacy. We despair. If Markle and the Duke of Sussex had decided to chose surrogacy, that would be totally their decision, however, as much as we don't want to believe Meghan looks this good eight months pregnant, it's the truth. Britain's royal family is beefing up its social media operation amid a rise in racist online abuse targeting the Duchess of Sussex in the months after the announcement of her pregnancy, sources have told CNN. Kensington Palace staff are devoting more resources to deleting comments targeting Meghan and blocking abusive Twitter and Instagram accounts. Software is being used to filter out the use of the N-word as well as emojis of guns and knives. As part of the effort, the royal family issued a set of guidelines last week for people engaging with its social media channels. Separately, the advocacy group Hope Not Hyatt analyzed a sample of more than 5,000 tweets containing the most commonly used anti megan hashtags. The analysis of the tweets, posted between January and the middle of February, shows that a tight-knit group of accounts is behind much of the trolling. Twenty accounts were responsible for about 70% of the tweets, sharing anti megan hashtags, pictures and mums. The fact that such a small number of users generated such a large number of the tweets suggests that the accounts were created for the purpose of producing negative content about the Duchess, Hope Not Hate said. The Twitter bios associated with the users typically contained Megan-related hashtags like Sharp Mexit and Sharp Charlie tying Duchess, as well as political hashtags like Sharp Brexit and Sharp Mega, Make America Great Again, sometimes in combination. Some of the accounts also shared links to far-right websites and social media pundits. Many posts used racial epithets to describe Megan. However, there is no evidence that the accounts analyzed by Hope Not Hate are part of a far-right campaign against the Duchess. CNN contacted Twitter and Instagram for comment. Twitter has since suspended a few of the accounts analyzed. The small group of accounts that troll the Duchess often retweet news articles that portray Meghan negatively. Since Meghan and Prince Harry's relationship was first revealed by the media in 2016, there have been references in articles to Meghan's rich and exotic DNA, reports that her family went from cotton slaves to royalty and claims that the Los Angeles native was, almost, straight out of Compton, in a reference to the new song. There was a brief lull in the negative coverage after Prince Harry instructed his spokesperson to issue a statement in November 2016 before the couple married, calling out the racial undertones of comment pieces and the outright sexism and racism of social media trolls and web article comments. Yamia D. Gok, author of Slay in Your Lane, The Black Girl Bible, said Meghan was very much a departure from what most people associate with the British royal family. She's foreign, not just by being American, 
but she's got black heritage, she's a divorcee, a degog said. She's just a very different type of person and somebody that I don't think your average British member of the public thinks of when they think of the word duchess or royal family at all. Much of the trolling exploits the claims of the rift between Meghan and her sister-in-law, the Duchess of Cambridge. Where Kate is lauded by the media for exposing her shoulder in a dress, Meghan is accused by the tabloids of breaking royal protocol for doing similar. When Meghan wears dark nail polish, the vulgar fashion move is criticized for breaking royal protocol again. Meanwhile, Kate is said to opt for subtle shades more in keeping with the Queen's preferences. There's no protocol on nail varnish in the British monarchy. Type Meghan and Kate into Google News and you get memes of eye-popping stories comparing the sisters in law based on what the palace says is a manufactured feud. It's just clickbait, a source close to both duchesses told CNN. The pressure to produce ever more dramatic headlines to drive traffic is intense, perhaps even more so when it comes to Meghan than when Kate Middleton entered the royal family. Back then, the running theme was how Kate came from working-class roots. So, is there any truth to the rift? The duchesses were in their thirties when they met, and already had their own established, close-knit groups of friends. And while the pair may not hang out together or call each other regularly, the source tells CNN, they are friendly and they text one another linked as they are by a common bond. The alleged rift has also been cited as the reasons Meghan and Harry are moving out of Kensington Palace and plan to establish their own office. But CNN source said this is more to do with Harry wanting greater independence and William needing his own team in preparation for so-called reign change, when Charles will become king and William will step up as the Prince of Wales. At a Royal Foundation event in February 2018, Harry and William suggested that if there were any disagreements, they were between the brothers and not the wives. The royal press pack has pushed back against accusations that they are biased against Meghan. They say they are just doing their job, covering the news without prejudice, and they claim they do far more positive stories about Meghan than negative ones. But online trolls have exploited the weathering of Meghan on online news sites and gossip pages and reports of a feud between her and Kate. Hope Not Hate researcher Patrick Hermanson said he was surprised to see discussions about Meghan which he described as pure conspiracy theories, suggesting she isn't really pregnant but is wearing a fake baby bump. The way I understand that. It's an attempt to distrust and make her seem unreliable and distrustful, he said. Meghan and Harry's forthcoming child will be the first known mixed-race baby in the royal family's thousand-year history. Adi Gok, the author, said speculation is rife about his or her likely appearance. There's been a lot of talk on Twitter, not just from racists but also people who are very pro megan about recessive genes, about whether the baby will have an afro, whether the baby will have its mother's nose, she said. There's all these coded conversations happening about what the baby will look like, and it sounds really horrible to think, but a lot of people offered up the idea that the blacker the baby looks, the worse its treatment will be. Hermanson said the anti megan trolls have also seized on themes like so-called cultural decline. Meghan Markle fits into this bigger idea of the West and the UK and decline, he said. She does that by not fitting in, by being who she is, which is mixed race. People tie these things so much to what they think it means to be British, which is white. So, it has a racial element to it. But there's also this idea of cultural decline opening bracket that closing bracket what we were before, a strong palace, a monarchy, an empire, is falling apart, and that of course is brought on by these other far-right conspiratorial ideas, like what mass immigration is doing with our society, the replacement of British people of British culture. That narrative has already been used to troubling effect in December last year. A UK offshoot of a violent US neo-Nazi group posted an image calling for Prince Harry to be shot, according to a BBC investigation. And they accused him of being a race traitor for marrying a mixed-race woman. Those ideas can enable people and motivate people to take direct action in a violent way. There are lots of examples of that in just the last opening bracket few closing bracket years, 
said Hermanson. Harry and Meghan's 2018 wedding was hailed as a moment that united British society and cemented the country's connection with the U.S. The announcement that a new royal baby was on the way should have bound them still closer. But the marriage and the impending arrival of baby Sussex have also exposed divisions which a very small group of people are keen to exploit to spread their message of hate. What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to get instant news update.